Unsightly, but very dangerous. It can destroy many Russian tanks in Ukraine. With this video, we'd like to pay tribute to one of the most prominent combat aircraft since World War II. No, this is not the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II fighter, the famed Cold War fighter, or the famous F-22 Raptor. Today's hero of ours does not have a swift silhouette. Moreover, its appearance is rather unsightly for what it received the rather unflattering nickname Warthog. We're talking about A-10 Thunderbolt. That's thousands of destroyed tanks, thousands of other armored vehicles and artillery systems. According to this indicator, the A-10 Thunderbolt has no equal. The A-10 Thunderbolt II was the first U.S. Air Force aircraft specifically designed for close air support of ground troops on the battlefield. It began in service in 1977. After the A-10 entered service for a long time, it was treated as an ugly duckling, which was due not only to its limited use, but also to its appearance, for which the A-10 received a nickname, Warthog. The plane was criticized, and the Air Force even considered getting rid of it, intending to use a modification of the F-16 as a ground attack aircraft. The unexpected successful use of the A-10 in the 1991 Gulf War put an end to the debate about the fate of the plane. In all, 144 aircraft of this type were used in the operation, which performed about 8,100 sorties with seven aircraft losses. That's on average one loss per 1,350 sorties indicating the phenomenal survivability of this aircraft. At the same time, the bearded vessels destroyed 1,000 Iraqi tanks, 2,000 pieces of other armored vehicles, and 1,200 artillery systems. In one sortie, a pair of A-10s managed to burn 23 Iraqi tanks and damage 10, a phenomenal result. It had never been done before or since. So what is this attack aircraft? You could say that this plane was designed around a cannon. But what a cannon! Outstanding! The 7-barrel 30mm GAU 8A Avenger is amazing. It was a Gatling gun. Its weight is 281 kilograms, and together with the feeding system and the drum with full ammunition, it weighs 1,830 kilograms. The gun length is 2,900 millimeters, and the barrel length is 2,229 millimeters. You can evaluate this monster in comparison with the famous Volkswagen Beetle. The rate of fire of this monster was 3,900 rounds per minute with very high accuracy. When fired at a range of 1,220 meters, 80% of all shells hit a circle of 6.1 meters in radius. During the operation, it became clear that during the firing, the powder gases were sucked into the engine of the attack aircraft, and as a result, the unburned powder particles were deposited on the blades of the compressor and the engine fan. The accumulation of unburned powder particles after every thousand shots reduces the thrust of the aircraft engine by 1%. The total reduction in the thrust of the engines with firing was up to 10%, which increased the likelihood of stalling the flow from the compressor blades and engines. To ensure that the engines did not stall when fired from an artillery unit in 1981, they were built in special ignition devices that ignite the unburned particles of gunpowder. As a result of these measures, the problem of powder particle accumulation was solved. The ammunition has 1,350 rounds of 30 by 173 millimeter caliber with aluminum casing. It includes sub-caliber armor-piercing shells with a uranium core and incendiary fragmentation shells. They alternate in the ratio of four armor piercing to one high explosive. The plane itself is a low plane with a trapezoidal wing and twin vertical wingtips. The fuselage of a simple semi-monocoque type fuselage was made mainly of aluminum alloys, which were highly resistant to defoliants. A mixture of defoliants and herbicides was the famous Ancient Orange that was widely used by the Americans in Vietnam. It has a fairly high survivability. The fuselage should not collapse if two opposed spars as well as two adjoining skin panels are damaged. The pilot and critical control systems of the attack aircraft are reliably protected by 1.5-inch titanium armor that can withstand a 37mm shell hit. The armored cockpit is made in the form of a bath assembled on screws from titanium armored plates. The armored glass of the cockpit can withstand a 23mm shell of the famous Soviet anti-aircraft gun Shoka. The tail fins were designed to allow the A-10 Thunderbolt II to continue its flight in case of loss of one of its keels or even one of its stabilizer halves. New and interesting for military aircraft was the mounting of two General Electric TF-34 GE-100 turbojet engines, which were placed in separate nacelles on each side of the attack aircraft's rear fuselage. 
One advantage of this layout was a reduction in the radar and thermal signature of the engines, a lower probability of foreign bodies entering the air intake from the runway, and lower firing powder gases from an artillery gun. It also increased the survivability of the engines when fired from below. They were protected by the fuselage. The engines have 4,112 kgf each and could accelerate a fully loaded aircraft with a weight of 13,628 kilograms to a speed of 834 kilometers an hour. And in general, the maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft is 21,148 kilograms. In 1986, the A-10A received AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles for self-defense. A total of 715 A-10 Thunderbolt IIs were produced, 707 of which were in production. As we said, there was a brilliant combat debut of the A-10 Thunderbolt II in Iraq in 1991. Then the A-10s were used in 1995 in Operation Denial of Flight Danny Fly, in Bosnia and Herzegovina in strikes against the Bosnian Serbs. They operated under suppressed air defenses but did not show much success. Since 2001, the A-10s have taken part in the International Coalition Operation in Afghanistan. For some time, they were based at Bagram Airfield near Kabul. Since 2003, these attack aircraft have taken part in Operation Iraqi Freedom. In March and April 2003, a total of 60 A-10 attack aircraft were involved in combat operations. One aircraft was shot down on April 7th near Baghdad International Airport. Another Thunderbolt, Captain Kim Campbells, was severely damaged. One engine was damaged, a hydraulic system failed, and hundreds of holes in the wing, plumage, and fuselage of the aircraft, but the plane returned safely to its airfield, once again confirming its phenomenal survivability. In January 2005, an updated version of A-10A, A-10C, appeared. The emergence of the attack aircraft was facilitated by the Precision Engagement Modification Program of the U.S. Army Armament Renewal. Thus, the A-10C opened the way for the obsolete A-10 Thunderbolt II attack aircraft to enter the 21st century. The REM program calls for the refinement of the 356A-10A to A-10C status. The tasks the A-10C attack aircraft can handle are much broader than the A-10A. The updated aircraft is equipped with modern reconnaissance equipment, a satellite communication system, and a laser guidance system. The first A-10C entered service with the U.S. Army in 2006. The A-10 Thunderbolt II attack aircraft has a very large wing, which allows it to carry a large set of weapons. Only after the appearance of the A-10C modification could the attack aircraft make full use of high-precision ammunition. Now the A-10C weapon set consists of two air-to-air -air guided missiles, two AIM-9, six AGM-65 guided air-to-surface missiles, four LAU-61, LAU-68 unguided missile units, six LAU-10 unguided missile units, 24 MK-82 high explosive bombs, four GBU-8 or GBU-10 guided bombs, or six GBU-12 bombs. In 2014, the aircraft was decided to be removed from service. The aviation general said that with the money allocated, either the bearded or F-16 should be cut. Then they announced a competition for a new attack aircraft. As a result, it was decided that the A-10 will live on until 2028. Experts give it until 2028. Well, it's difficult to find a substitute for a very effective, survivable airplane costing some $18 million and costing $17,564 per hour of operation. Recall that one hour of flight time of the F-35 cost the American taxpayer $28,000 and the plane itself costs $83,400,000. But there are plans to replace the A-10 with the F-35. The Pentagon intends to conduct comparative tests of these aircraft for reaction time and accuracy of strikes. In connection with this, we have a suggestion. Should not warthogs be sent to the war with Russia and Ukraine? Do you say the Russians have very strong air defenses? No argument there. But all their S-300s, S-400s, Thors, and Bucks work confidently at altitudes of 100 meters and above. If an airplane's flying at a low beam, it can be shot down with a manned portable air defense system like American Stinger or Russian Igla. But the hero of today's video, A-10 Thunderbolt II, has already repeatedly demonstrated its survivability to the needles. Plus, equipped with state-of-the-art infrared traps, this aircraft will be difficult to hit. Recall the reasons for developing the A-10. 
Soviet tank superiority over NATO was looming in the 1960s. Thousands of Russian T-64s and T-62s were threatening to rip Europe apart, but now we're seeing the same thing in Ukraine. A noticeable superiority in the number of Russian tanks over Ukrainian tanks. So maybe the A-10 will allow us to level this advantage. What do you think about it? Write about it in your comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There will be many more interesting videos about modern weapons, and if you enjoyed the video about this celestial military worker, please give us thumbs up. It'd be the best reward for our hard work.